Okay, uh, doing a little reboot as it were. I got, I took this out of the freezer, or I had my wife take it out of the freezer uh, over a week ago. Uh, it's one of my Nagamorich peppers. They were fresh, I ordered them from someone on eBay last year, and so I had her take one out. I'm going to do a reboot of the of this to see how, if the hotness has been diminished at all by them being frozen and then thawed. Um, I'm, I've never read if they do that or not, but uh, this Nagamorich, uh, it's pretty soft, kind of squidgy, but it's not too bad. They freeze really well, actually. They're still I still got a few, probably a dozen left in the freezer, and they're they hold up pretty well in in uh, refrigeration. So here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, really sweet, very fruity. Still has that bubble gum like flavor to it. Keep cooking right away on my perimeter of my whips. Wow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Feel it all the way up there. Ooh. Kicks in in the throat. As soon as I swallow, I can feel that. Body's flirting with the. There we go. I was gonna say hiccups, but there they come. Ugh. Yeah, my whole <laughs> lips are just got a good whoosh happening inside of my mouth. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can feel it in my throat too. Fairly intense. Are rocking. And just the whole outside of my lips are just bam! Right off the bat while I was even chewing the pepper. Sinuses are draining a little bit. It's just an overall just glowing ember inside my mouth all the way through and into my throat. It's starting to feel warm going down. Definitely got a rock and burn going on here. I don't it doesn't feel as bad as if, like the first time I tried it. I don't know if it's because I'm accustomed to it now or if it's because they lost a little bit of their potency being frozen for so many months like that. Probably seven months I had them in the freezer. Or six. No, only five months actually. But even still, that's quite a long time. I just have them in a little Ziploc baggie. I don't have them vacuum sealed or anything like that, so there are ice crystals forming. Not too bad though. They're pretty low moisture overall. Thin wall of the flesh. Yeah, quite warm all the way into the middle of my chest a lot of of it. My lips are throbbing pretty intensely still. Whole tongue. I got a decent glow. Roof of my mouth, right in the center of the roof of my mouth. Gotten a little bit numb. But look, my whole hole inside of my mouth is just pretty warm overall. Yeah, my lips are just, especially on the crescent moon shape outer edges here on the sides. Not so bad in my mouth anymore. I wonder if it's because I didn't, because it, because it was frozen and thawed, it broke down a lot easier in my mouth, and so it didn't take as much time to chew it up and get the capsaicin really slathered around inside my mouth.
it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty hot. But. Feel like. It's still really burning, but it's not as intense of a throbbing, pulsating sensation. It's a little bit slower. It flares up and then slowly recedes. It doesn't quite get as intense on the peak of the pulse before it ebbs again. Yeah, because it slowly comes from <clears throat> back into the front, out, blooms out into my lips, and then behind my cheek skin in my face, it kind of waves up a little bit, and I don't really feel as warm as I would expect. The intensity for the first couple of minutes was more than, say, a habanero, but it, it's kind of dying down. It's, it's pretty hot right here in the middle, but it's not throbbing. I don't know, it's just more of a of a high warmth right in the center of my throat here. Doesn't really feel <clears throat> stinging or tingling um, or a painful stabbing, shooting pain like when I first tried them when they were still fresh and so every time I would swallow I could feel that. My lips are still probably the worst. My nose is running a little bit. My face is kind of warm and I feel a faint bit of sweating in my scalp but it's not as intense as before. So, yeah, it's dying down. Top of my tongue. Fairly warm, but a lot of it, that warmth has settled right into the middle of my chest, right in front, or right behind, rather, my sternum. And it's kind of radiating out into my rib cage a little bit. All in there. That's fairly warm in here, but like in the mid-range of my throat, coming up into my mouth, not really much going on. A tiny bit, I feel like a, almost like a ring of burning coming up into my mouth, like back by my uvula and my soft palate. Back there, I feel that. But probably the most prominent sensation besides the warmth in my chest would be my lips. They're still got a really good almost like a like a tingly a lot of tiny little spots of burning that keep pulsating in and out in and out in and out back and forth amongst each other like you would get with with a lot of uh, the like the serrano and, and other type of peppers from that family has a different tone to it an underlying overall encapsulating warmth that you don't get with with uh, fairly mild varieties like a Serrano. The Habanero and, and uh, Jalokia families have that different quality to them, the burn. Uh, so it, it's an underlying warmth. And it's, a, it's a very pleasant sensation compared to, like, a, if you eat a cayenne pepper or a Serrano or something like that, uh, the distribution of the capsaicin, I think, is is a determinant in that. Instead of coating your entire the entire inside of your mouth and your throat and, and esophagus, uh, it's a little more sporadic, and so you feel a little more pinpoints of of a of a caning sensation, and so it doesn't it doesn't feel as pleasant. This is a just a nice pleasant warmth overall. It's intense, and when you first eat it, you can it you can feel a little pulsating throbbing faint pain in your mouth and, and lips and throat, but it's not as painful as I perceive it as when I eat like a one of the annuum variety peppers that aren't quite as hot, cayennes, serranos, jalapenos, poblanos, and everything like that. Um, the pain sensation comes through a little bit more as opposed to the warmth and the, and the good glow, the embers that you get, the sensations that you get from the jalokias or the habaneros. And I found out recently on the subject of that, that Jalokia's, you know, the Nagamorich, Beef Jalokia, Boot Jalokia, and Dorset Naga, they're all um, mostly chinense, but a genetic testing has been done on them and determined that they do have uh, some uh, genes 
from the Frutessens species of peppers, so they're an uh, interspecies hybrid. They're mostly chinense genes, so they're in the habanero family, a lot more rooted a lot more firmly in the chinense varieties, the habanero family, but the Frutessens does have a little bit of the of its quality coming in. I'm not really familiar with the Frutessens peppers. They uh, <clears throat> aren't as commonly cultivated. I think they're native to South America, and they're mostly ornamental varieties, but I'm really not sure. I'll do more research and, and get back to you on that one, but they, uh, I think that they're ornamentals, and ornamental peppers tend to have thinner flesh that's a little bit, um, more paper-like almost. I don't want, it's not quite paper because the peppers aren't dry, but the flesh is thinner, the walls are thinner, uh, skin is uh, thin, but can be leathery and waxy on some ornamental varieties. I'm pretty sure that the frutessens are the are ornamental, largely, um, which would account for the the thin walls of the jalokia, but they do have the more of a fruity, sweet, uh, a unique, more unique flavor, uh, like the habaneros do, and so they have that, that as far as the flavor goes, uh, you know, extremely fruity, as opposed to, you know, bell peppers, which don't even when they're ripe, they do taste sweet, and they can be fruity. I've had, like, a poblano I had that was ripe red. Um, did have an apple-like flavor to it, but a lot of times the annuum varieties in particular don't have as much of that. But, yeah, heat's pretty much died down now. A faint glow on my lips. A um, little bit on that region of my tongue. Faint tingling when I swallow a little bit in my throat, and but the heat does even dissipate it in my chest area as well. It's not too bad. So, in conclusion, my Nagamorich, after being thawed, still packs a really good heat. If you don't, if you're not used to eating spicy stuff, it definitely you would notice that it's pretty hot. But compared to when I first ate them, they don't seem quite as hot. Um, but it could be any one of several factors. It and the, not for any lack of capsaicin, but just. Uh, how they broke down and I didn't get to it coated my mouth didn't coat my mouth as much as when I ate the fresh one because it took more chewing before but now they're now that they've been thawed they're a little bit they break down easier they're more succulent and, and almost slippery texture no, I don't want to say slippery because it it doesn't have an unpleasant texture but just soft oh a bit quite a bit softer not slimy but but break down really easily really soft almost like the texture of a ripe banana once you start chewing it a little bit but yeah, the flavor was still phenomenal, um, and the heat is still right up there um, with the different habaneros I've had. So, good stuff.